Hello, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Um, the last couple of videos we've been talking about the shoulder and we've been getting deeper and deeper. So today, let's get straight into the deepest part, the bones of the shoulder and the pectoral girdle. Um, we've been talking about the movements, we've been talking about the muscles. Let's have a look in a little bit more detail at uh, what's involved, what's being moved. So you can see that this is the pectoral girdle here and we have three bones involved, the three bones we've been talking about, the clavicle, the scapula and the humerus. So we should have a look at the shapes of those bones, how they connect together and some of the lumpy bumpy bits. And you can see from this model there are quite a lot of ligaments involved. Okay, so if we look at our skeleton we can see that here's the clavicle, here's the humerus, and spinning round, here's the scapula, right? There are a couple of interesting things about the pectoral girdle. Have you noticed any of them? For one thing, the, this whole upper limb is only connected to the rest of the skeleton directly at one point, at this point here, right? Look, here's the clavicle coming from the manubrium. The scapula is completely free-floating. We talked about how that rotates. And the humerus is hanging off those two. So all of this stuff is pretty much just hanging off this one point here. So many of the joints are sensibly named and many of the ligaments are sensibly named as well. If this is the clavicle and this is the manubria sternum, but for all intents and purposes the sternum, then this is the sternoclavicular joint, right? Uh, and the sternoclavicular joint is a synovial joint. The cartilage covering the articular surfaces is typically des described as a fibrocartilage and there's a thin wedge of uh, an articular disc in between the two articulating surfaces. Uh, but it's all held together very tightly by a whole load of ligaments. Now, this joint is actually pretty mobile, which is why it's a synovial joint, right? So you can, you've got this, and this is all moving from this point, and you've got all this, right? You've got all of these movements of protraction and retraction and elevation and depression, and they're all occurring at this uh, sternoclavicular joint here. That's why it's a synovial joint. It's, 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 um, so it's got a synovial capsule, it's lined by a synovial membrane, the synovial capsule is filled with synovial fluid, it's, it's very synovial, it's a proper synovial joint, lots and lots of, uh, uh, it's, it's easy for movement to occur here. And the, uh, the ligaments that are supporting it reinforce that synovial capsule. Now we've got two sternoclavicular ligaments, anterior and posterior. We've got interclavicular ligaments actually linking these two clavicles and tying down to the manubrium as well. And do you see where the first rib is here? Uh, the first rib, uh, the costal cartilage of the first rib is here as well and it's often described as articulating with that. So we have a ligament between uh, the, the, the clavicle and the costal cartilage, so the costoclavicular ligament here. And so there are a lot of ligaments holding this joint together. And this is why when somebody falls with an outstretched arm and they send that load of the fall through the outstretched arm up through the, the glenohumeral joint and into the clavicle, or maybe if they just land on the shoulder directly, this is why the clavicle tends to fracture instead of dislocate. It very rarely dislocates. It much more commonly breaks. So uh, clavicular fractures are quite common. Uh, so that's the sternoclavicular joint. Now look at the scapula, right? So here's the scapula. We talked about the scapula being this, this very mobile thing. Ooh. It rotates on this skeleton. Never really thought about that before. That's cool. Now the scapula has got a few features on it, like the spine. We saw supraspinatus was up here and infraspinatus was down here and so on. Um, but do you see this, this bony prominence up here? This is the acromion. Uh, the acromion acro on top, um, like the acropolis, the Greek acropolis being the highest point. So this is essentially the highest point of the scapula, the, the acromion. And this here is the coracoid process. This is, this is running anteriorly, do you see? There's the acromion, 
up high and there's the coracoid process so the coracoid process passes through here so anything that attaches to the coracoid process is coraco something or other uh, and stuff that attaches to the acromion is uh, acromio something or other and then this in here is the glenoid fossa or the glenoid cavity it's that very shallow depression that the the head of the humerus then sits in and articulates with that glenoid fossa is is very shallow but it's supported by the glenoid labrum like this uh, rubber ring of connective tissue uh, making the glenoid fossa a little bit deeper and doing a fairly good job of holding on to the head of the humerus so that shallow glenoid fossa means that we get this wide range of of movements that we like in the shoulder um, but it means that it's fairly weak and of course the rotator cuff muscles are holding all of this together they're holding the head of the humerus uh, into the glenoid fossa and that glenoid labrum hold, helps hold it all together as well so this then if it, the clavicle is coming in here and this is the acromion this then is the acromioclavicular joint um, and the acromioclavicular joint again has a whole bunch of ligaments supporting it the acromioclavicular joint is also a synovial joint. Again, the cartilage covering the articular surfaces tends to be described as a fibro cartilage rather than a hyaline cartilage or an articular cartilage. There's another articular disc in between the two surfaces. Uh, there's, an, uh, there's a synovial membrane and a synovial capsule and all of this is held together by uh, the ligaments and what have you supporting the capsule here, which is great. So again, this is another very, very strong ligament here because of course we've got the whole upper limb hanging from it and then we tend to lift heavy things and do things with it, right? So here's the humerus, and the head of the humerus then articulates with the glenoid fossa. This is the glenohumeral joint, and this is a high quality synovial joint. We've got articular cartilage here covering the articular surfaces. We've got that synovial capsule. Um, the tendons of the rotator cuff blend with the synovial capsule to support it. Uh, ligaments around here do as well, but we also have a number of bursae. Now there's a well-known bursa under here, the subacromial bursa. This is acromion. This subacromial bursa runs between the bone and the supraspinatus tendon as it passes through there. So what's a bursa? Well a bursa is um, it's a sac, a very thin sac with a little bit of synovial fluid within it uh, and you tend to find it between bones and tendons and ligaments and that sort of thing to allow these things to run smoothly and freely over one another, right? If you've seen my recent videos, you'll have seen that I, I cracked my uh, bursa here with a bike crash which inflamed it and caused it to make loads of fluid and it it swelled up like an egg. It was great. Um, and that bursa there is, is between the skin and the bone, right? This is the subacromial bursa here. But the other thing in the shoulder is that around here, because you've got all of these muscles and all these layers, and this is a highly mobile joint, there are other bursae around this joint, and they're a little bit variable. And these bursae are often folds of the synovial membrane of the glenohumeral joint itself. So you have to be a little bit careful because if you puncture one of those bursae, you may be puncturing the synovial capsule of the joint as a whole, which tends to be a bad thing, particularly if infection gets in there. You don't want to do that. The subacromial bursa tends to be a separate bursa to those things though. Um, okay, so also around this joint we have quite a lot of muscles interacting with the shoulder here that we've seen. One interesting thing is that here is the, the intertubercular groove here. We've got the greater and lesser tubercles on either side. And this is where the long head of the biceps, brachii muscles, tendon passes and passes up here to insert. And this actually runs into, whoa, come here. And that actually runs into the joint capsule. So it's surrounded by bursae again. So this is a left humerus. You can see running between the lesser tubercle which is medial and the greater tubercle which is lateral and bigger. The bicipital groove also known as the intertubercular groove anteriorly. So in here then we've got 
we've got, uh, as you might expect, a ligament between the coracoid process and the clavicle, so that's the coracoclavicular ligament. Um, that's actually made up of, of two ligaments, coenoid and trapezoid, I think, something like that. Um, and then you have the ligaments connecting the clavicle to the acromion, so the chromio, acromioclavicular ligaments here. But what you might not expect, and is a bit weird, is there's a ligament between the coracoid process and the acromion. So why would you have a ligament between two parts of the same bone? What's that going to do? But well, that's the coracoacromial ligament. And what it's actually doing is it's reinforcing the joint capsule here between the clavicle uh, and the acromion of the scapula. Okay, so we've gone deeper into the shoulder. We've looked at the bones of the pectoral girdle, that is the clavicle, the scapula, and the humerus. We've only looked at the proximal part of the humerus, the head of the humerus, and some of those bony bits that the muscles we've been talking about attach to. Um, we've talked about the uh, sternoclavicular joints, the acromioclavicular joints, and the coracoid process. We've talked about the parts of the scapula and how all this stuff links together. All right, so I hope your knowledge of the shoulder is pretty good right now. If you haven't seen the other muscular videos, go back and have a look at those. Um, thank you very much.